Hello fellow pilots, I'm Captain Jim Kang and with me I have Cap Captain Keith Partner here. And today we're going to demonstrate to you on how to load the new NavTech and in addition to that the aero data performance numbers. So here, once the ADAROOs line up and you verify your position, you're going to go straight to the route page, go to the flight plan and look for the company uplink number. And in this example the number is 43636. Simply enter that number into the company route, non-database, that's okay, we'll go ahead and clear it out, and then hit the request L3 key. This will take normally around 30 to 90 seconds, give it a second here. While this information is being uh, processed, the pilot monitor or the first officer will go to the flight initiation page. Keith will then enter the date of which the TLR was prepared. In this case, it's the 16th. While he does that, I'm going to go ahead and enter the flight number, S00714, today's flight number, here in the CDU R2. That information is now inserted automatically. After I execute it, it will, it will be loaded here in a second. But additional, the flight information you need to fill out, the flight number, the date, the flight plan time, and then the crews that are flying this trip. So for this flight, we have a two hours and 10 minute trip. And my employee number is 848, and Keith 1096. 1096, okay. All right, let's go back to the CDU. As you can see, now I have a Route 1 up leak ready. Hit the L4 key. And in this page, I'll hit the legs page, and now the Route 1 is up leaking. information is now completed. Let's go to route page, page 2. We'll verify the route. It does match us with our flight plan. We have a Seattle, Seattle 5 departure, direct Seattle, J65, Red Bluff, J3 to Oakland, and direct to McKay, Lenny 6 LA. That matches here. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and activate and execute. Notice now, on the flight initiation page, we should have some of that information populate, but if not, we'll just go ahead and put it in manually. No big deal. S00714. Departure SEA. Destination LAX. And that is good enough for now. Here we can go back to return. And now let's go ahead and load the performance data. Notice now on the company. There is a new selection called Performance. Select that. Before I go to take off runway list, let's go ahead and put a SID star in the CDU. Departures arrival. We know based on our ATIS, information runway 16 is active. We'll select a departure and now we'll go ahead and execute. As to the arrival, same thing. The arrival, we followed for a Lini 5 departure and we're expecting ILS 24 right. SLI transition and this is coming from Daisy. Again, we'll execute that. Now, we both have runways at the departure and a runway at the destination. That information has now been uploaded here to the lower ICAST and now, if I go to take off list, take a look, the information is now available for you. All the runways available at the Seattle Tacoma Airport. 16, 16 right, as well as opposite direction. And this includes the, uh, land, the takeoff distance. Information is now ready to go. Now, takeoff condition is the next option we'll select. From here, this is will be normally blank, but I've pre filled it already based on our current ATIS. Uh, we'll put in the winds at 16010, outside temperature 10, QH 2992. Fuel on board based on your totalizer from the upper ICAST. Zero fuel weight and takeoff gross weight CG will come from your sable sheet. All right? You insert those two numbers. In this case, any ice will leave it engine auto. It is calling for rain and low visibility. Page two, thrust will be selected to optimal. Low level wind shear does not apply today, and flaps will select as optimal as well. Page three, this is where I've selected wet. It will default to dry, so you will have to come and select wet. Once those three pages are filled, go ahead and hit the send key. 
Again, this will take approximately 30 to 90 seconds depending on how much runway you requested. And we'll just wait for that to come through. While we're waiting for that information, on the CD on the left side, I have pre-selected the Perfinet page. And on the right side, I selected the takeoff ref page to show you what the uplink will look like. We've got information back here. Now, multiple, there are multiple checks with the aero data service. It will know if your fuel that you requested is different than the one on the flight plan, your fuel fuel rate again, if it's more than 10,000 than what was flight plan, all different checks. In this case, we have a zero fuel rate less than what the plan zero fuel rate by about 18,000 pounds. Again, all these are different checks here. Page two, so here's our number. In this case, we'll be taking off one six, perhaps five, with a takeoff two, climb two, soon temperature 49 degrees, and there are your B speeds. We do have a simple uh, special procedures, and that is on the next page. Here's the information you have. Go ahead. On the top of page two, you'll notice the uh, runway was wet, and because the temperature was 10 degrees, it selected the engine anti ice on. Now I'm ready to upload this information into our CDU. So to do that, you will print it from there. Ah, yes, so okay. So we're at this point, you do have the option to print. It is important. Go ahead and do that. ACARS is now printing the data. We'll put that in our flight envelope kit. Now I'm going to hit cancel, go back to company, back to performance, and now I'm going to go to the third line, take off with data. It's the same information that you just printed. But now you have a send function down here, which will then request to load the FMC. So here we go. We're going to send. And now we're looking at our CDU. As you can see, takeoff uplink ready to go. This is the Perfinet page. Reject or accept. I'm going to hit accept. And now it's going to override my zero fuel weight to what I have. Now the cost index and the cruise altitude you will fill out manually as well as the reserve. The new procedure for a reserve is not the fuel to the alternate, but what is on the FMC reserve stated on the flight plan. So in this case, FMC reserve 17.0, that is the information fuel that you'll put on that line. On this side, on the takeoff reference page, page one, again, you have reject, accept. Go ahead and accept, and now it is applied your takeoff two, climb two with your assumed temperature 49 with the flats five, your V speeds 162, 172, 172, and now on page two, our new standard takeoff profile will be the NADP2, which will be engine out minimum height of 1,000 feet, normal acceleration height 1,000 feet, and thrust reduction will be at 1,500 feet. All right, we'll go back to notice uh, we have a perfinet here because I did not pre-field again. We'll put a cruise altitude, and that information is based on the flight plan. In this case, it's on the second line, Seattle 350. We'll put in 350 here. And I got the cost index 30 by looking at the top page line here, cost index 030. All right. With that said, we've got our thrust limit. We got our takeoff page. We got our performance number. We're ready to go.